Scientists are humans, and humans make a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes are being made right now with niacin, and I'm not going to say which side is, but I will name the side that I'm on, the debate that I'm on. I use niacin. Actually, niacin was used for decades for cardiovascular prevention, a mainstay. It's the only thing that increases HDL and decreases LDL, and most importantly also decreases LP little a, as well as some other things. But everybody agreed, and all the meta-analyses showed that niacin helped, until two studies came along. The two studies were HPS2 Thrive, which used Lepropion to get rid of that niacin flush. Lepropion not only gets rid of niacin flush, it gets rid of the positive aspects, the positive treatment effects of niacin. The other study was AIM High. Now this video is about AIM High because it's very interesting. Even the principal investigator of the AIM High trial said this, I'm afraid people are going to interpret this study results as meaning that we shouldn't use niacin. And that would be a big mistake. So we're going to cover the video where he says that and the New England Journal article where they describe it. This video has an interviewer plus Dr. Holden on the left here with his arm on the table and a recognized international expert, Dr. David Chapman, the director of the atherosclerosis program at the NIH for France in Paris. So again, these two studies, HPS2 Thrive and AIM High, were the one-two punch that took out niacin therapy for most Americans. Again, as I mentioned, even scientists, as dispassionate as we're supposed to be, are humans. As a result of those two studies, now meta-analyses, you know, a meta-analysis is something that covers all of the science. Even the meta-analyses, despite the preponderance of evidence indicating a positive impact by niacin, over half of them now are saying, oh, it doesn't work. How can you look at almost the same science and come up with different conclusions like that? No further comment. I've already stated my case. Based meta-analysis still says, look, it still helps. And I would obviously agree with that. Now let's go into the details of the AIM High trial. This is the New England Journal title page, and that's the clip and image from the video. And we'll show some clips of the video itself so you can... It's kind of grainy. You know, they, these guys obviously used to feel like I did, and that was... If content is king, then video quality and editing may not matter. Well, I think we all learned our lessons the hard way on that one. Here's the title page. Here's the link to the video itself on YouTube. The AIM High study design was a secondary prevention trial. Basically what that meant was we already knew these people had cardiovascular disease. We're just trying to prevent it getting worse. These patients were treated already and they were treated in a big way. This is the issue. I'll give you a spoiler at this point. These patients, according to my beliefs and a lot of beliefs these days, I'm not alone. These patients were over-medicated and under-managed in terms of lifestyle. Already on simvastatin, 40 to 80 milligrams every day, high dose simvastatin. Then they added azetamide. Their goal was to get LDL down to 80 or below, a target level of 40 to 80. To those people, then they added a gram and a half to two grams of niacin, also significant healthy doses. Now you can see it on the video timestamp, one minute to two minutes and 30 seconds. We'll show some of that here. Now, just to repeat, LDL was targeted at 40 to 80 milligrams per deciliter, an aggressive target. Aggressive high dose statins, 40 to 80. I've used simvastatin quite a bit, but never those doses. I've taken it myself and didn't take those doses, and I haven't used it with my patients either. In the study, and then they added ezetimibe to reach goal for LDL. And again, that LDL goal was, at this point, at minimum, debatable. Video timestamp for this was 2.59 to 3.36. As I mentioned, I don't have anybody on that. I don't agree with that. Over-treating and under-managing lifestyle. How did they deal with the niacin flush? Here's another issue, which, again, Dr. Holden, to his credit, admitted, well, we didn't think that was a problem then, but now, it's interesting, and it's a video timestamp, 2.30 to 2.59. What does this mean? What's this thing about the masking the placebo effect? So, as you know, niacin causes a flush. So how do you do a placebo and a study arm 
and they don't figure it out. If I get a flush, I know I was in the study arm. If I don't get a flush, I know I was taking placebo. So to get around that, they gave niacin, but just in smaller doses, 50 milligrams instead of a gram and a half. Again, you can see Dr. Holden's own reaction to that in retrospect. Endpoints on this study were what they usually are in this phase, heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular hospitalization, or death. They stopped the study early. The original intent was to study 4,000 people for probably about seven years. A real goal was, to, was an event-driven trial. They wanted to accrue 800 events. They stopped at 36 months. And actually, in the group that took the niacin, there appeared to be a potential for a little bit more strokes. So they clearly showed, at least in that group, that niacin was not helpful. High-dose niacin was not. And you know what? I don't disagree with the results of that study at all. As I've said, have I mentioned, too many medications, too high a doses, and not enough lifestyle. Yes, I guess I've mentioned that. Maybe I've beat that to death. You know, one of the things that, that caused all of this was this murky issue around statins and HDL. Many people have thought about it. And if you look it up on Google and read it in different articles, you'll see many, many articles saying that statins will increase HDL. At best, you get maybe a 5 to 12% elevation of HDL. But with many patients, you get, especially the ones that get a major decrease in LDL, they'll often get a decrease in HDL as well. So the statins and HDL issue is a murky issue. And when you go back to the original study design, that was the whole point. Giving people a lot of statins, giving them azetamide, still having very low HDL levels. So can we give them niacin instead? That was the real study question. Why don't we just use lifestyle? Harvard Health Publishing is noticed this for years and they wrote it up. They said, look, smoking will cause low HDL. Eating a high carb diet causes low HDL. So why don't you stop the smoking and stop the carbs? And that's what I recommend. Very simple. So again, as I pointed out, even Dr. Holden said, it's premature to abandon niacin. I'm very concerned that many will say as a result of this study, that we no longer need niacin. That would be a mistake. Again, my credits to Dr. Holden in terms of being very open and honest about the challenges he worked through in this study. And obviously, I don't hold with a major portion of, for the Europeans, it's mostly Americans. The Europeans are still using niacin, and I am too. So at the end of the day, patients will say to me, Doc, all that science is great. But just tell me what you do and tell me what you think I should do. Well, first of all, and most importantly, if you've got a low HDL, you need to look at your lifestyle. Restrict carbs. And of course, if you're smoking, you need to stop. Restrict carbs, stop smoking. And yes, I take niacin. I take uh, endurocin. There's some technical reasons why I do, and we'll save that for other videos. Thank you very much for your interest. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. And here's the thing, Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs, we go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.